Hey guys, what's up? It's James Brandon, and in this video, I'm going to go over this uh, image here from Milan. This is the uh, main Duomo or cathedral in Milan, and uh, just some creative things you can do inside of uh, Photoshop to make the image look better than it uh, does right out of the camera. There's a lot of things you can do. Uh, in this image, the sky is obviously quite boring. Um, as you can see here, there's not much to it. A, there's a little bit of clouds coming across the image right here, but it's not enough to, to leave in. You can see the blue here and everything over here is kind of white, uh, looks overcast. So what we're going to do is just remove this sky uh, to some extent and add some streaks behind it to kind of simulate sort of a, um, a long exposure where the clouds are kind of moving and expanding out. And I'll show you kind of how easy this is to do. Um, you know, inside of the what program of your choice. So <clears throat> first of all, I'm going to kind of clean this up inside of Lightroom since I'm here. Um, the first thing I want to do is make sure that there's no um, uh, chromatic aberrations. And um, let's see here. You can see a little bit here. And you know what? Actually, I'm not even going to worry about chromatic aberrations in this because I'm probably just going to transfer this over to a sort of a sepia tone. But uh, just since I'm here, I'll show you how easily you can do this. For those that, you, that don't really know what chromatic aberration is, if you look really closely here, I'll go to three to one, and get really close here. Uh, this is chromatic aberration. Towards the outside of the image, you can see that this is on the left edge of the image. If you're using a wide angle lens, sometimes the light will come in um, at a different angle than it does at the center. And it, it just, it's a failure of the lens really. And the more expensive lens you buy, the less you'll see this, but you'll still see it from time to time, just depending on the light. And it happens at areas of large contrast. So you can see here that the, the, the uh, Duomo is pretty dark where the sky is very bright. So there's a huge amount of contrast difference here. And that's why you see that. So what you really just need to do is say what, um, what color is this chromatic aberration? So how do I need to change it? So I can see some red here and some blue or cyan. And you can see here over on the right that there's a red and cyan um, filter. So you just drag this over and it will shift the chromatic aberration out. And if you take it too far, it'll start bringing that red um, and green back in, uh, in this case. So you just want to get that to a sweet spot. So you can see here how, how bad it can be if you don't you know, get it right. So I'd say probably somewhere right in there is going to get rid of most of it. Uh, again, you don't really need this if you're going to transfer it over to black and white or cyan or anything like that. But, you know, it's always an option. Um, so what I need to do is just figure out what I want to do with the building. Um, I'll probably take it into on one software and use something from uh, perfect effects and we'll kind of just go through there and see what's available. So um, you can see like a little hair or something that was on my sensor. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to take this sky out. So from here, I'll just do edit in Photoshop <clears throat> and wait for it to pop over to there. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I've changed my mind a little bit. I'm gonna leave the sky as it is um, to some extent. I'm gonna create a mask still around the, the building and then I'm going to overlay a new sky over it, um, the existing one, just so it leaves a little bit, there is a tiny little bit of texture back there. So what I need to do first real quick is just create a new layer by hitting Shift Command N on a Mac and okay, I don't need to name it really. And let's see here. I'm just gonna use my healing brush to go over this little squiggle here. There's another little dust spot here. And uh, that's all the dust that I see right off the bat. So I think that'll, that'll do us just fine. I'll hit Shift Option, Command E to merge all the layers into a new one. So now I need to figure out what I want to do to remove this, um, this sky or create a mask around it so I can use that mask uh, here in a bit. So I think for this, um, I'm just going to do a fairly quick option. 
And first I need to add a mask to the layer, just like that. And then make sure that I have the image highlighted and go down to filter, Topaz Labs, and I'm going to use Remask. So Remask is a pretty simple program and it's letting the program do the mask for you instead of um, you know putting a lot of work and effort into it. So you can kind of refine it if you need to, but it really is going to do a pretty good job if you have a lot of contrast uh, right off the bat. So it works with this gray or this green overlay, and then you use this brush up here on the right in the toolbar, which is a compute brush. And you can make it bigger or smaller um, by using the brackets, just like in Photoshop, and you use the plus minus sign to zoom in. And then you can use hold down spacebar to drag the image around. So all you have to do is come down here to the edge, and you can use as big or as small of a brush as you want, but you just draw a line around the border here. And what Topaz uh, Remask is going to do is it's going to take anything in this purple line and say, okay, use, use this as a place to uh, create a mask. And it's going to compute around that line um, to create it. So it really is just going to depend on the image and how well it's going to work and how much uh, you know touch-up work you're going to have to do with the mask afterwards. I'll just kind of create this fairly quickly here. All right. Zoom out. I hit Command-0 to zoom out just like you do in Photoshop. So you can see this purple line here. So now I'll go down to my fills and select red fill. And as long as you have a line connecting from one side to the other with no breaks in between, I can fill this red sky here. So now I have the, the green, which is my keep section, red, which is my drop section, and purple, which is my compute line. So now I hit com uh, compute mask, and it should work pretty quick, actually. And there you go. That's my mask, uh, as, as simple as that. I have the sky completely removed, and you can see a little bit of gray area along the edges here. And if I had taken my time to do a very small brush and go along the edges, um, it would have done a much better job. But what you can do is go back up here to the brushes. Okay, I'll make a little smaller brush. And if you just draw along these lines, just kind of sample from it, it will refine that, that mask and make it that much uh, more precise. So I'll just go along the edges here real quick. I won't spend a whole lot of time. If you, if you get a little out of control there, you can just start hitting Command Z. Again, just like in uh, in fate or in uh, Photoshop, I almost said Facebook. I don't know why. All right, and you'd actually probably be surprised at um, even with this these small portions of gray here how well the mask is going to actually look, and how quickly you could also you know do this touch up work inside of Photoshop. So I'll probably just leave it just like that. I think that looks fine. All right, I'll hit OK, which will take us back into Photoshop. And now we have a mask to use. And I might not necessarily use the mask on that layer, um, but I have the mask created for future use. So here's where we create the streaks in the sky. So I'm going to hit uh, Shift, Command N again to create a new layer. And uh, just for the sake of the video, I don't always name my layers because I know what they are. And I don't usually do um, composites with hundreds of layers where I need to have them named. But I'll just name this um, sky. So hit G to bring up your gradient or your paint bucket. If you want to switch, you can hold this down. Or you can just hit Shift G to go to your paint bucket. And um, let's see here. And actually, I'm sorry, I need to do a gradient. So I'll hit Shift G again to go back to gradient. And now I need to decide um, what colors I want this uh, sky to be. 
And if you were gonna leave this image as a color image, then you could pick like a blue and a, a white or something like that. For this, black and white is fine. All right, so I'm just gonna drag from the top to the bottom and you can see how it's loose here. If you hold down shift, it will constrain it to straight up and down. So I'll just go from the top to the bottom, just like that. And um, there's my gradient from black to white. The next thing you do is go up to filters and uh, blur, or I'm sorry, um, render, and then clouds, which will give you this. And it looks, um, you know, pretty terrible, and that's fine. So then you go back to filter, um, and then let's see, blur and radial blur. And then you do a zoom blur, and then just take the uh, the radio or the amount of blur and increase it drastically. And it's not going to give you a like the greatest preview of what it's going to do, and th and that's fine. You just go up somewhere, you know, basically high. You can kind of see the middle here, and hit OK. And sometimes this takes a while, so it just depends on how powerful your computer is and what you have going on in the background. But there's our, our blur. So we have this streak uh, that has been created and the middle, you can kind of see it kind of exploding out. And that's fine because we're gonna have the building in front of that. So now what I need to do is go down to my mask and drag it up to the sky. And since right now we have the sky only and the building is taken out, I'll hit Command I to invert. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Make sure that your mask is selected when you do that. Hit Command I to invert the mask, and now we have the sky behind it, and it looks terrible right now. But that's uh, that's also fine. So I'm going to hit uh, Shift and Plus to cycle through my uh, blend layers for the sky in the background, and you just go through until you find one that you know looks what you're looking for and overlay is going to probably do the best job you can try soft light and that will that looks good too um let's do overlay and now we have our our streaks created in the sky and then if you want uh, if you think it looks a little bit too strong you can pull back the opacity of that layer and just get it to right where you want it and one other thing you can do to bring a little bit more detail into the uh, to the sky on the right side here, let's um, duplicate this sky layer and hit uh, Command J to do that, and then Command J to do that again, and we'll do it once more just to get everything really popping on the right side here. Now I'll highlight these three. Um, or I'm sorry, I'll, I don't need to do that. I'll just do Shift, uh, Option, Command, E to merge those layers. And then I'll delete these because I don't need them anymore. Then throw a black mask over that to cover it up. And then with about 10%, maybe 20% opacity, I'm gonna paint with white and just start painting that portion of the sky in. Um, and it's just gonna be a very gradual you know, process to, to bring that in. You don't want to go overboard with it. But now you can see that we have just a little bit more detail in the sky over here. And if I hit, uh, turn this layer off, you can see that's before and after. So just as quick as that, and you can do something with it. Um, the next thing I want to do is get this um, image looking is, you know, is it for black and white or sepia or whatever I want to do to it. So for that, I'm going to go to uh, On One's Perfect Effects. So I'll merge these layers again and go up to my On One palette up here and Perfect Effects 3, double click and wait for that to launch. So here we are inside of Perfect Effects and if you've never been in this program before, it's just a huge library of filters and, and presets that you can use to uh, add to your images and just get them you know exactly where you want them <clears throat> so you can kind of just go through these if you hover over the image it should bring up a, um, a preview of it just like that 
or if you want just a full preview, you can of course click on it and it will give you the, the large preview here. And it's not even a preview anymore because it's added that layer to the image. So you kind of just want to go through and find one that you like. Um, let's see here. Try warm gray. I don't like that. <clears throat> I think we tried snappy warm before. Let's try roadie. <clears throat> and one thing that I, I like to do from time to time is I'll take the result and then I'll go over to strength here and bring it back, which is opacity basically. And you can even bring a little bit of the color back into it. You can bring it all back like that, or you can just kind of do this, maybe around 60 to 70%. And it's almost unnoticeable, but it's there. And I think, um, I think that'll actually work right there because the, the building was already close to this color. So adding the um, effect on there is just kind of exaggerating uh, the way it already looked and then creating a little bit more contrast. So I'll hit apply <clears throat> and that'll take us straight back to Photoshop. And now that we're back inside of Photoshop, we can close the on one palette over here. And I'll turn this layer on and off um, just to see the before and after. It's fairly subtle. Um, it's just taking out the color for the most part. So if I turn that back on, here's the after. And um, one thing that this filter has done to the sky is introduce quite a bit of noise and we don't want that. Um, what I can do is go back to my original mask here. And that's why I always leave that, that layer there. I'll never delete it because I can still reuse that mask if I want. If I wanna leave the mask there, I can hold down shift, or, or I'm sorry, not shift, option, and drag this mask up to replace the layer mask there and then invert it. <clears throat> so now we only have the perfect effects layer affecting the building here and not the sky behind it. And we have some color in the sky behind it. So what I'll do now is go over to black and white. Okay, and then replace the layer mask by holding that option. Say yes, I wanna replace it. Hit invert again. And now it's only affecting the sky for the black and white layer and then leaving this one the way it is. Um, so you can use these masks a lot and just flip flop them for whatever purpose you need. So my final um, work on this image will be adding some detail to it. So I'll hit shift option command E once more, go back to my filters and I like Topaz adjust for, for um, adding detail. It's just, it's by far my favorite uh, program for doing this kind of thing because it'll just make your photo pop so much and you want to apply it sparingly because you can really easily go overboard with it but for an image like this it's really going to do a lot for it so I'll just use Chris because that's kind of my go-to one in, um, in adjust it's the I probably use that about 90% of the time and over here on the right side you can you can adjust these if you want if it looks too hard but I don't mind it looking um, overdone in, inside of Adjust because I can just bring it back inside of Photoshop. So I'll hit OK, just leave it the way it is. And Topaz Adjust is really quick. You can see the status bar down there. And there you go. So I don't want the effect on the sky, obviously. It makes it look really bad. So again, I'm just gonna drag this layer up, invert it to only affect the building and I'll bring my opacity back to take some of that topaz out and make sure that it doesn't look really, you know, overdone and overprocessed. We just want it to look really sharp, but not, not uh, psychedelic. So I'll toggle this before and after. And I think that's it. I have this image pretty much right where I want it. But you can see um, just by knowing some of these ways um, or some of these little tricks inside of Photoshop, you can really drastically change the look of an image just with a few steps. I mean, this is you know a fairly extensive edit, but it's not that many layers. Um, I see five, six, seven, eight, nine layers here. So that's really not a whole lot. And uh, that's it. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I will answer them uh, as 
soon as I can. And thanks for watching.